Hi everyone, it's Sunday the 1st of May and it's 3.40 in the afternoon. Now this video is going to be a little bit sort of here and there, mostly about computers, but there's a few things I just want to chat about first as I'm waiting for some spray to soak in on the worktop anyway so I can clean it and then we can use it. Um, yeah, so before we get into the computers um, I just want to update you on a few things really. Um, the three, oh, the games consoles I bought off my brother, they all work. Um, in fact, two of the PS1s needed some very slight attention. Or one of them had a sticking eject button and the other one, the um, laser reader that runs up and down on the runners, runs back and forth to read your CD, that stuck. And literally just a very small squirt, because it's all I have, of this three in one bike oil, literally just a very tiny squirt of it on each runner got that working, and a tiny squirt on the eject button stopped that from sticking. So, <clears throat> um, but yeah, I got rid of two of those, three of those actually. I've only got one left. One I gave to a friend of mine, um, and the other two I sold at car boot. <laughs> Um, yeah, I only really bought that lot off of him because I just wanted a few, literally a few games for me, three, that's all I kept. Um, the other good ones I kept from a friend and anything else went on. Well, I kept what I thought my friend would be more interested in, what I know he likes to play, or the style of games he likes to play, I should say. So, everything else got put on the car boot. Um... The one I've kept is the one with the horrible faded um, top cover, which works. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that one. I might just keep it around as a spare a spare parts or something. Uh, the N64 just needed a bit of a clean up because um, it wasn't recognising it. Again, cartridge was inserted. had the red flashing LED when I powered it up. Um, and all I did, I just found a random 9 volt power supply and had to fit a connector to it that actually fit the uh, N64. <laughs> um, but after a bit of googling, I found out that the N64 doesn't care if it's an AC adapter or a DC adapter or what polarity that plug is, just as long as it's 9 volts. So, <laughs> I wish all electronics were uh, as easy going as that one, you know doesn't care what it is, as long as the voltage is, so, is um, correct. But yeah, with a bit of um, IPA and a cotton bud, I cleaned up both the cartridge, the game cartridge that came with it, and the slot. Got it working. The only part I haven't got working yet is the um, AV out. It's just got video and left audio. Yeah, well I can, but the picture is horrible. <laughs> I don't think I've got any audio either. RF works fine, got that working a treat. But um, going back to the AV sockets, they were covered in quite a bit of rust on the outside. So I can only assume perhaps some damp has got in there and perhaps corroded some components or something, or just the sockets themselves inside. I did try cleaning them. I did put some IPA down there and um, get like an RCA plug and just move it in and out to try and clean it up, but maybe I need to try something else. See if I can get cotton bud in there, maybe. But yeah, other than that, it works, and the Xbox original works, the N64 works. I had to buy a um, an RF, not an RF cable, an AV cable for that, because I didn't have one. But I did manage, with a bit of wiggly, <laughs> to get a PS1 cable to work in it. But you literally had to hold it at just the right angle with you know, your tongue-in-cheek tongue sort of thing just to get it just right. So I knew it worked, so I um, bit the bullet and bought a um, RF cable for that. AV cable. I had to buy the RF cable for the N64 because I didn't have one. <clears throat> I was borrowing the um, one for the Mega Drive in the bedroom. Actually, I could have used the one on the uh, Master System, because they're both exactly the same, as are the power supplies, believe it or not. 
Right. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's all hunky dory. Um, I'll have to try and get some video footage at some point, but uh, my stepdad caved, so to speak. I knew he would eventually. You see, when they lived down the road, they had a lovely garden pond. And obviously that had to be left there. And originally he was going to bring the fish and put a garden pond in where they live now. And then decided, nope, I don't want to do that. So he left the fish there. But when he was thinking of um, bringing the fish and having a pond at the new place, he bought a big pool. Not an inflatable paddling pool or anything like that. A proper pool. Well, if I stood in it, it would probably be up to about there. So probably about four foot deep pool. Um... Metal sides, plastic ring round the bottom, plastic ring round the top, proper sturdy, more of a permanent pool, I would have said. You know, something that you would leave out all season. Um, yeah, and that just sat in the back of the shed, because obviously he decided he didn't want to build a pond. And then about a month ago he decided he wanted to build a pond. <laughs> I knew he would, I knew eventually he was going to do that because he loves his ponds um, so he sort of upcycled the pool the pool is now the pond <laughs> what he's done I'll explain it to you but I will get some video footage of it he's dug about two foot in the ground on the other hand there we go <laughs> that's not two foot but yeah he's dug two foot into the ground roughly sunk it in the ground so about two foot is above ground he's put all the ledge on he's going to put some wood around it so it doesn't look so much like a pool <laughs> um he's built a wooden ledge for the waterfall to go on that's all in place um he bought the filter pump and filter system for it a good couple of months ago now 85 quid on marketplace two big old filter boxes full of media all the pipe work uv light and the um, pump for 85 quid i don't know for a fact that the pump and the uv light alone would come to more than that barn and brand new <clears throat> yeah so he, he got a good deal there um but at the moment he's having trouble with the um filter box and waterfall full but um, no matter what he does, for some reason, the um, filter boxes are overflowing. And there's, there's plenty of flow going to the waterfall, but for some reason they're overflowing. So he's got to sort that problem out. Um, yeah, that's about the only issue. It's all ready to go. He's just got to buy the fish to put in it. He's got some rocks and some gravel and whatnot in the bottom of it. Um, rescued the screwdriver bit that my brother left in the bottom. <laughs> like we didn't notice until there was like a good couple of foot of water in there. So my stepdad said, well, I've got to put the rocks in the bottom so I'll get it then. So that's what we did. Yeah, it actually does look nice. And I actually like the fact that because he's used that sort of pool and it has like a ledge that you can put around the edge of it so you can sit on it. Um, you know, when you're in the pool, you can just sit on the edge and dabble your feet in it if you wanted to. Um, he's put that on as well, so you can actually sit on the edge of the pool. Or the pond, I should say. I might go against that idea. Knowing what their Labrador is like, I can just see her jumping up at me while I'm sat on there and we both end up in the pond so I may not do that <laughs> the other thing I've been up to for the last few weeks at least is um, car boot sales they've started up for the season um, the first one uh, we didn't go to but I think it was the second one um, since I started up the car boots again, around here at least, uh, me and my mum went and we ran a stall as well as buying. And of course I thought it would be a good opportunity to take all my duplicate die casts and whatnot from my collection and try and get rid of some. 
The only problem is that day I came back with uh, twice as many as I went to the car boot with. So I didn't quite work. <laughs> Not duplicates, just die cast in general. Because um, obviously I'd gone for a walk around as well and found lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of die cast. That weekend there was loads. So what I find a bit weird with car boots, they can be hit and miss, especially if you're a collector of perhaps Lego or die cast or whatever. Um, especially with die cast at my local one, you could go there one week like I did a few weeks ago and find just stalls selling boxes box full of um, like matchbox and all sorts of little cars um, usually 50p each or three for a pound um, and then you could go the next week like we did yesterday there wouldn't be bugger all there there wasn't really anything well, there's one stall selling just die, two stalls actually selling just die cast. One's a regular and one I'd never seen before. And he, I could have been there all day buying die cast, but I actually behaved myself yesterday. I'm hoping he'll be there again next time I go, and I might go over um, this Saturday coming. Weather permitting, of course. And also this Sunday coming. Um, or next Sunday I should say there's Tunstead Village Garage Sales that mum wants to go to and I would like to go to on the same day um, in the village of Skyton which is um, closer to mum's than Tunstead is Tunstead's not too far away um, but Skyton is literally just a couple of miles from Mum Tunstead, it's like four or five or so, there's not a great deal in it. But anyway, Skyton, there's a little pub called the Skyton Goat, and annually, up until Covid it, they held like a classic car rally. They have trade stalls there, you know, people selling car parts and all sorts. In fact, the last time I went there, I found one of my vintage Lego Technic sets. Now, I would like to go that uh, to that as well, so I'm hoping we wouldn't be around Tunstead for too long. I think um, I think the Skyton Classic Car Show or Rally, whatever you want to call it, I think I'll last or runs until about five o'clock in the afternoon. So if Mum doesn't want to go to that after we've done Tunstead, which is possible because of her back, it might be hurting too much by then. I'll just hop on the moped and. And go across myself. Or I could actually ask um, my stepdad see if he wants to go. <clears throat> yeah, been a nice little weekend, I think. Oh, can't put that in the bin. <laughs> I've got a bag in the recycle bin. I might put it on the side for now. Right in there. Right, dishes are done. Um, there's some other bits and bobs unrelated to computers that I want to show you, but I can do those in another video. I've actually bought a couple of um, amber beacons. One I picked up for just £10. Magnetic rotating one by Britex. And yesterday, for £2, I picked up an LED beacon. And I've tested it. And it's bloody bright. It's a lot brighter than I thought. I thought for two quid, and they only sold it for two quid. I thought that's going to be just a cheap one he found on eBay or something. It's not going to be that bright. Wrong. <laughs> it's um, a pretty decent LED, and I'm actually going to put that on the back of my moped. You watch me. You're probably thinking, why would I want to do that? Why not? I don't have a car to put it on. I can't drive, so I haven't got a car at all. I like flashy lights. So, I'm going to stick it on. And I know I'm not the only person that's actually done that around here, because I have seen another one. I don't see it often, and I actually come to think of it. I haven't seen it for a while, so. Alright. Note to self. Don't let gravy dry up our worktop because I'm paying the ass to get off afterwards. <laughs> there we go. Right. 
I'll show you what I've got first. Um, the freebies. And then there's a motherboard here. This one. Now, this is my old i7 board, right? Um, I basically traded with my brother um, as part payment for that job. A lot of computers and computer cases I got from him. Because he wanted something um, cheap and cheerful to use at Mum's until he decided to move to Ireland with his girlfriend. And it's now surplus to requirements. <laughs> Problem is, he changed the GPU in it, but I don't think he'd actually fired it up because when I looked at it, there's no SSD or anything in it. Um, and now it doesn't boot, it just power cycles. And what I mean by that, well, I'll show you, but basically, I turn it on, fans kick up for about a second, and then the whole board shuts off for about two or three seconds then it powers on for a second then shuts off lather and repeat that's all it does and I've tried just about everything under the sun that I can think of to find the issue and I can't I've even done some googling <laughs> I'm just I'm lost so I'll show you what it does and if anybody could help it would be much appreciated because I would like to get it working again because what I wanted to do is actually put all of this into a different case. That's why the motherboard is here. I bought it at home the other day. Took it out of the old case. Um, well, the, yeah, the old case that this was in when I gave it over to my brother. And fun fact, I actually bought this motherboard from him a good couple of years ago. So it's gone from my brother to me, to my brother, back to me. <laughs> and now it doesn't work. Maybe that's why. Maybe it's just throwing a hissy fit. Um... But yeah, there's a few things I googled that it could have been like it wasn't recognising a GPU was connected because apparently it needs a GPU fitted because there's no onboard graphics. But apparently it needs it fitted for it to boot. So I was reading. Um, but for those that may want to google it while I'm showing you these other bits, it is an Asus Rampage 4 Extreme. It's all got written on there. I can't see any revision numbers. But literally, if you just Google that, you will come straight up with it. Right. So, I'm going to start with the laptops. And I've got to go at the lounge to get one. This one, I'm not sure I'm going to bother too much with. It's an old Advent. It's quite big. I think it had a Vista sticker on it. Um... Yeah, it has this on here. Intel Celeron. Centrino Duo. So there it is. Don't worry, the keyboard was all with it. I've just taken it off. Because I thought there was a keyboard issue. What it does when I power it up. Don't get nothing on screen. Get the power lights on. I can hear the hard drive wind up, but that is it. I don't hear it making any noises to indicate it's booting or anything. It literally just makes its windy noise to wind up. That is it. And the laptop just does nothing. It just sits on a black screen. If I shut it off and then turn it back on, especially via the button, down here on the front panel, I get the power light, but then I get the num lock and the caps lock lights on as well. And pressing the keys on the keyboard does nothing. Even plugging in a USB keyboard does nothing. So I'm thinking that there has got to be a motherboard issue on here. Could be a dead processor. I don't think I've got any spare laptop processors I can shove in here. Because it's literally there, so it wouldn't be difficult. I don't know if there's any RAM on the other side of the board, but it has literally only got that. Which is one gig. Which is actually a laptop version of some desktop RAM I've got. I've got some desktop RAM, same brand as that. And for being, there's got to be at least two on here for Vista. <clears throat> I would hope. <laughs> if not, this would be very crap. Um, all screws for it there. There was some silver screws here, and I can't remember what they were for. <laughs> but I accidentally was wiping things off the worktop, and they've now shot all over the kitchen floor somewhere, probably never to be seen again. 
but yeah, cosmetically it's in good condition. Um, so I don't know what to do with it. I don't know whether to take it to the next car boot sale me and mum do and just see if I can get a couple of quid for it, spares or repairs. I mean, it's got to be worth a couple of quid to sub one, maybe for the plastics or the screen. I can't see no breaking breakages in the screen. Yeah, I don't know. I might have a play with it to see if I can get it. If I have any um, processors that fit this socket, I'll try one of those. If I haven't, then I can't. <laughs> right, let me just go and grab the other one. It's only in the lounge. Let me go around the corner. This one is a little Samson. Nice little Samson actually with, um, I don't know what the COA is on there because I can't read it, but likely Windows Vista or 7, what could it be, an XP looking at that. can't imagine, it. no that's not an XP. As you can see it's all uh, faded, <laughs> so I couldn't give you the um, key for it even if I want to. Again, this is in very nice condition cosmetically, apart from Cumulus. Actually, it's got Windows 7 on here. Little sticker. Intel Celeron. Not a bad processor, in my own opinion. The, one of the Intels that I really hate using, because every machine I have used personally has been slow as hell with them, is the Intel Atom. Which I like to put on some um, laptops, especially like the little notebooks. Oh! I don't like them because I just, I don't know if it's just me and just my machines, but I just find them to be extremely slow. There's no charge in it. Um, I don't know if there's any hard drive in it or anything. I haven't looked. But what I do know is the um, power jack is all mushed up. And there was two different power supplies with this. And one of them had a bent pin in as well. So, I'm guessing that might be why I got shoved in a cupboard. So, if I can get a um, power socket, you know, cheap enough on eBay or whatever, or even another one of these, I might have a look and see if I can find another one of these for a decent price. I'll get it and I'll see if I can fix this one. So that might be the only reason, maybe a Maybe the pin on the plug got bent somehow. The owner didn't realise and just tried to force it in there and ended up mushing up the socket. I don't know. I do like the laptop though. I might just see if I can find a key as well. Oh shit. And the last thing I got from him was this big old HP desktop. I want to have a quick look inside this. There we go. That's just a fake cover there. There's nothing under it. Put this drive up there. Now this does boot. However, <laughs> when I did that, I can't remember what I was. I was trying to do something. Not involving the hard drives. I can't remember what I was doing. Um, and it froze while I was doing it. So what I want to do... Actually, as it's a thumb screw on here, I'll take the cover off. HP had to do things differently and put everything on the left side, not the right side, like everybody else. Yeah. Uh, this has got Windows Vista currently installed. But there we go. So I can upgrade the RAM. I can upgrade GPU. We've got a hard drive. Um, and that is a Seagate, and that might be the issue right there. <laughs> um, well, that's a Barracuda, and to be honest, I've not had much issue with the Barracuda drives. It's always the video and um, pipeline that I've had trouble with. It's a bit dust, so I might just go in here while it's open and just clean it up a bit. And uh, fire it up again. I didn't actually look to see how much RAM is in here. I don't really want to take that out. Still got a lot of the old Molex connectors on here. It doesn't look like there's anything... Yeah, 
know, sorry, the, um, oh no, both drives in here, both the hard drive and the ROM, ROM drive, not the RAM drive, RAM drive, <laughs> a SATA, and there's four SATA connectors on here, still have the, I, actually we still have two IDE sockets, got one for the floppy drive and one for a CD or hard drive, tiny little cooler, just full of crap as well, See, for all I know, it might froze because it got too hot. It might need thermal, you know, some thermal paste on. In fact, I might just redo that and run the machine and just see what happens. Um, shall I do that in another video? Yeah. I don't want this video going too long. We can do that in another video. Oop. Right. Let's bring this back in. So here's the trouble. <laughs> here's Captain Trouble at the minute. Um, I was just checking the caps around the processors to make sure that all of those are fine. <clears throat> I've never come across a motherboard with so many fan headers. There's one up in this corner. There's one here for your processor. There's another one up in this top corner. There's another one there. Uh, and along the bottom, there's another one, two, three. So I think there's, well, six for the chassis at least, and one for your cooler. I've had all this off. I've reseated the processor twice. Um, I've reseated the RAM a couple of times. Maybe I should just remove one bank because these are two separate banks. Just in case there's something there that's gone a bit nuts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've. Um, can't remember what else I've tried. Obviously, when it was in the case, I went through items one by one, unplugging everything. Obviously, it wasn't that. That's one of the reasons I took it out of the case because I thought now that I've unplugged everything I might as well take it out of the case because it would be a bit easier to work around and try to you know get it to work again a bit of warpage there but it shouldn't be a problem um, no standoffs in the case so no it wasn't shortened against anything like that it's, just, it's really weird and annoying. Right. And I'm sure I had the keyboard and mouse plugged in at the top there because that's where I actually plugged them in when I was using this PC. When it was my daily driver, I really do regret getting rid of this. Um, but oh well. Mouse, that's what I was looking for. I'll plug that in. It's down here tangled up in all the bloody cables. How? How do ca how do they do this? I would like the scientific explanation as to how cables just laying on a surface like that can get all like this. And the same behind your TV. You plug all your cables in, you get everything set up, you leave your TV for months and months and months until you need to perhaps unplug something because you've got a new piece of equipment or whatever and all the cables are bloody tangled up. How? I, I, I would love the answer to that. <laughs> Alright, let's just plug that in. But actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to shift you over the other side. Right, that's where you can see the screen now and probably see all of this a bit better. I just thought put the camera there to start the video as just a different angle, if you like. And I've just had a heart attack because this just fell on the floor. It's actually tempered glass. It's um, for one of the cases I bought off my brother. Didn't even realise it had a temper glass. I thought this was um, plastic when this case was over at Mum's in the shed. Nope. Tempered glass. I'm guessing my brother likes um, NZXT cases because that's what this one is. I want to put this board in. And that's what the Ryzen is that I bought from him. That's in an NZXT case. And fun fact, the one 
I traded for one of those computer bits, my old um, i7 rig. That was in an NZXT case as well. Um, well. I got that one from a different friend, from another friend. I've got the BIOS on there. Well, like I said, I've already flashed that. No bueno. That's some laptop screws and whatnot. Don't need those. Um, do need the power supply, which is cool. Now, this is not the power supply that was in the case. That is still in the case. So I have used two different power supplies as well and getting the same result. <coughs> so I have asked on a um, Discord server that I am on, they've got a technology channel. And I, you know, I had those suggestions as well, have I done this? The usual sort of tech stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, and I've done all of that and I'm still getting the same bloody results. So this has actually got four pin for the processor, um, eight pin for the processor, sorry. And then another four pin socket. Now, when this was um, in use, I'd never had a power supply in the four pin socket, just the eight pin. Um, Same. What is so freaking awkward to get in there? Will you get your ass into me? Thank you. There we go. Swear at it, that's the usual answer. <clears throat> yeah, I was just, I'm just checking what cables I have here. Because that um, power supply that is in the case is the one that was in the original case. And that was one my brother bought me for Christmas a couple of years ago. Um, so I'm pretty certain it ain't the power supply, but I might connect another motherboard to that just to double check it. But I can't see it being the power supply when I'm getting the exact same issues with this one. I know this one works. I actually haven't got any more power supplies anyway. <sighs> Problem with these ca this cable is it's so bloody, so many wires there, it's so pain, so pain. I can't English. So much of a pain to uh, twist. There we go. Right, so now I need electricery. supply on so my start and reset buttons have lit up I've not touched these dip switches but from what I can gather they are for these four GPU slots I've tried turning all four off I've tried just turning one off like the troublesome one apparently the one at the top here doesn't work according to my brother and what he told me when I first bought this board from him a couple of years ago before I then technically sold it back and now he's selling it back to me <laughs> I know it doesn't work, but I've already agreed to the deal, so. And there we go, that's all it does. We have a red LED come on down here and a green one come on there. I might actually, two green ones, sorry, I might actually try and note those down. <clears throat> Let me just turn it off because I've actually forgot to put the GPU in. Put the button down. Now when I had it, my GPU was always in the second one down, um, where I left it. I think I changed the GPU once. Yeah, I did. I upgraded the GPU once, and it worked fine. And before I agreed to buy this, my brother took the GPU out, or I took the GPU out, I should say, and I posted it to him over in Ireland. Um, yeah, this is all it does. I could sit here for ages and it will just do this. It doesn't seem like that would be a processor fault or a RAM fault. Um, 
I mean, I've looked at all the headers on here. I can't see any pins that are bent and shorting. Um, and I can't see anything that may have got bent or damaged when I was unplugging things, when I was taking it out of the case. What I'm going to do, I'll remove these two. Try now. No bueno. Yeah, I've checked so many different headers on here for <laughs> bent pins. I've not actually checked the other side though. Literally, I just took it out of the old case, bagged it up, brought it home, and uh, Gave it a dust out, put it in the case, this end, and that was it. That's all I've done. But uh, as I said, as my brother had changed the GPU as well, I'm not sure if that's done something. Um, yeah, I just I have no idea. Where's my button? Got to take the other bank out, didn't I? Duh. Alright. Let's just release these two. I suppose, just for the heck of it, I could try the RAM in the black slots. See, that sounded like that spun up for a bit longer, that time. Shut it off. Didn't hold the button down for long enough, did I? Come on, shut off. Shut off. Plan B. Let's completely move the RAM over a bank, shall we? The way I see it, it's got two choices. It's either going to do something or it isn't. Like that. That cable is pissing me off. Get out of the way. I keep forgetting there's no clip here to push down on, there's only one end on this board. I quite like that design. So you literally just pop one end in like that and drop it down. Nope, still getting the same issue. Be the processor fan would it? If it's not detecting that properly, would that do it? Prevent it from starting up? Um, I suppose it would, wouldn't it? Right. Let's have a ferret around in my box of fans. But you can never find the one that you want. You want. Experiment. worth trying I suppose. Like I said, it's either going to work or it isn't. What I will do, I will just put the RAM back where it was. Some time. Just in case any bloody dust have got in there. I hadn't actually intended to do all of this on camera, I was just going to show you what it did and uh, leave it up to you, but it's just a few more things I'd thought of. Bent one of the fins in. Went to self, don't do that. Right. 
How did I get that one in there? <laughs> right. No idea how that just happened, but never mind. Should have done this one first. Got a bit of added troubleshooting into the video. Right. I'm still doing it. Did I just see two red LEDs light up? Well, I'm no stumped, guys. I I really don't know. So uh, your thoughts and suggestions will be um, very welcome. Because I'm baffled. I am 100% baffled. And I have even tried this in all the other slots. I've tried every slot on the board. <sighs> See the little um, code thing at the top here doesn't even light up either. Oh, I'm not seeing anything under here. Reset light is on on the switch at the back. Had the um, BIOS battery out. Oh, and this has got the dual BIOS system on it, and I have switched it using that button. Like I just have, I don't know if you saw that, but the other yellow LED is now on. I get the same issue. I think I said I'd already um, reflashed the BIOS as well. No dice. So, ouch. That hurt. <sighs> that is a very loud fan on this GPU. Some Asus. Asus HD 6670, it's got 1GB DDR5 RAM on it. I tried, there's a little switch up here as well, I even tried that in both positions. Doesn't do anything. Tried the reset, tried whatever that button does. <laughs> you name it, I've tried it. So, help, please, because I would like to save the motherboard. Failing that, I might just have to see if I can dip into my pockets one weekend and see if I can find another one of these boards, because I really do like it. She's got LEDs there, but I don't know what the LEDs mean. Oh well, I'm going to end the video here. Um, thanks a lot for watching everyone, uh, please leave your thoughts in the comments below, because I'm stuck and I want to save it, I don't even know what this is for, <laughs> yeah anyway, thanks for watching, I will uh, talk to you in the next one, bye.